when you really start to like claim that I make it. Yeah, yeah. You, you're attacking Christianity. My, 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 I can deal with that, that Christianity later. For now, my position is, I'm, uh, at the moment, I'm trying to show you that Allah is not Yahweh. And Muhammad cannot be a true prophet. And then I'm trying to substan substantiate that within the biblical verses from the prophet who came before. And then what, did, what, what was the understanding of the Jew? Who was who's called the anointed one, the son of God? Who was it? When we read in the book, because you quote the New Testament, I usually don't quote the New, New Testament. Now I'm going to quote the New Testament in the book of John. John 10, 33. What does it say? The Jew answer him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you being a man, you make yourself God. Read 34. Yeah? What does it say? And Jesus answers them, yeah. It is not written in your law, I say you are God. If he called them God, petty God, small God, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world? You are blasphemy because I say I am the Son of God. And that's, that's what I'm saying to you. Again, within this language, the, pro, the, the, the Jew understood when he was claiming to be the Son of God, he was making himself equal to God. That's why they wanted but that, but, to... Okay. You said, so Tato were given to the human as a small God. Yeah. But what you're saying, the Father, you yeah. said, the Father has sanctified himself and sent word from heaven. He sent into the world. He was not from the world. He came in heaven, came into the world. So the Father sanctified. So that's the difference. When we talk, in according to Christianity, we all are children of God, which is not the concept in Islam. And that's again another point of confession, which uh, stand against Islam. Because clearly, in Deuteronomy 14, 1, it says, you are the children, the, the children of God. God is our Father, which the language the Quran does not embrace because Allah cannot be a father to anyone. So I'm saying to you, within the teaching, the logic of the teaching of the previous prophet yeah. is contradicted okay. completely. Can I, I'm, I'm finished. Oh, so yeah. I'm saying, within the verse, like, I only yeah. quote this verse yeah. because you went to New Testament. Okay. Yeah? No, that's, that's what fine. I'm quoting. So the understanding of the Jew within that time, the one who claim is the son of man, is divine, is equal to God. And where does it come from? It's come from the book of Daniel. Daniel 9. The one who coming in the cloud of heaven. The, lap, the one like the son of man. Coming in the cloud of heaven and came to the ancient of days. And to him was given all authority and power and dominion. That all nations should worship him. You understand? So what I'm saying to you, within the same message, what Muhammad is preaching, it cannot be the same message. Okay, can I respond? So you, you mentioned John chapter 10 verse 33. And in that where Jesus Christ was accused of blasphemy by the Jews and they're about to stone him. And in John chapter 10 verse 34, he says, and I quote, he says that, is it not mentioned in your books that ye are gods, that you are gods basically, depending on translation. Now, it seems to me that that very verse that you've quoted, no, no, uh, that, that very v verse, no, I, no uh, that very verse that you've quoted is one of the clearest and most precise definitive evidences against the divinity of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Why? Because Jesus is saying, after he has been accused of blasphemy by the Jewish people, in John chapter number 10, verse number 33, he was accused of blasphemy in the New Testament. He said, is it not mentioned in your books that ye are gods? Now that does not seem to be an exclusionary message whereby Jesus Christ is attempting to show his unique divinity. In fact, no, 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 let's be real. In, in this, in this, ver no, 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 no. It's mentioned, I'll tell you from memory. It's mentioned that, is it not mentioned in your books that ye are gods? Meaning what? Meaning that, the, the, meaning there is a semantical point, a syntactical issue here. The syntactical issue is, you are confusing the language of the Old Testament people 
with the divinity, the, the alleged divinity. Why would Jewish people want to uh, to kill Jesus Christ anyway? They would they would accordingly want to kill him if he's if he's blaspheming, as is mentioned in the verse, right? All right let me let me finish. So. He, if he's blaspheming, he's now exonerating himself from the charge of blasphemy. And how is he? So because they're about to stone him. So he, they're about to stone him and they say, look, he's coming back in John chapter 10 verse 34. And he's saying, is it not mentioned in your books that you are gods? Meaning what? Meaning that this language, you've misunderstood it. And the same thing, I've already mentioned a point about this language of sonhood, which I said to you in your own book, the book of Matthew, it says, blessed be the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Which shows you that the language of, of the Old Testament prophets has been misunderstood by the Christian. They're, they're hyper-literalists in this idea. They're making it a biological thing or something like that. We're saying this is nonsense. Now the second thing is I'll say that another very clear verse in the Bible is in John chapter 17, since we're in the book of John, and we went from John chapter 10 verse 33 and 34. We can now go to John chapter 17 verse 3. Which it says that you are, you meaning the Father here, the only true God and Jesus who you have sent. Now listen to this. This is very interesting. Let, let me finish, let me, please. Because now you can, you said that you want to bring the New Testament into the equation. And by the way, Christologically, jo the book of John, which is not part of the Synoptic Gospels, is the most, has the highest Christology. Now we're talking about the book of John here, which in, in John chapter 17, verse 3, it says that God is the only true, the, the Father, you, you, are the only true, the only true God is the Father, yeah? It's not even, says the, the word Father is not even in the verse. You are the only true God and conjunctive, and there's a conjunctive. So what and, wait, does it mean? No, no, what does uh, it mean? no, no, let me tell you. And Jesus, who you have sent. So what does this, and, uh, let me, what does uh, this imply? No, no, let me tell you what it implies. This was so problematic. Augustine, who was a 5th century scholar, the highest in his era, who wrote a whole book on the Trinity called De, De, De Trinitatis, about the Trinity. Voluminous, compendious book that I think one of the biggest in Christian history. He said this verse is so problematic that it has to be readdressed. He actually changes this verse. The word and, because it says here that you, the only true God, you, God, Father, only true God, and Jesus who you have sent, which is almost identical to the Islamic Shahada, which is La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah for example, at the time of Jesus would have been La ilaha illallah, why is that Rasulullah? Which is that there's only one God worthy of, there's only one true God, and there is the prophets. And that's we go back to the Bible now, book of Acts, chapter two, verse 222, which is that he's a man amongst men, sent with wonders and miracles and signs, which God did through him. That's what it says in the Bible, right? So what I'm saying to you is that, it seems to me that the Islamic notion that there's only one God worthy of worship, that Jesus was a Messiah and a messenger, you can make an argument from the New Testament corpus that this is the most sensible reading. That's why some secular historians like Bart Ehrman and others, they actually said that this was what Jesus was, a messianic prophet, quote unquote. He was, he quoted to be a, he, he purported to be a messianic prophet. The idea that he's part of a trinity or a family of a, of a co equal co uh, eternal with, with the Father and the Son. As you said, this is a development. The early Christians like the Ebionites and others did not believe in that. Yes, the, you know, these groups, it's not even clear in the Bible. There's no Trinity verse in the Bible. And you're finding it difficult, and I'll give you another chance here, but you're finding it difficult to address that how is it the case, my, my only question I had to you, how is it the case that you'll find in the Old Testament that all of the prophets that came, Abraham and Moses and all of those ones, they had a very clear idea of what God was, which is one God worthy of worship, there was no conception of a trinity which says that there are three co-equal and co-eternal persons of that trinity. And then you have this development after the inception of Christianity, a fourth century to be precise, which now has a crystallized creedal formulation of the trinity, which includes three co-equal and co-eternal persons of the trinity. That is inconsistent. Christianity today is inconsistent with the teachings. My claim is actually the opposite of your claim, exactly the opposite of it. I'm saying Christianity today is exactly, is completely oppo opposed to the message of the prophets, the Old Testament prophets, Jesus himself, 
who clearly made it, uh, the case known that there's only one God worthy of worship. How do you square this circle? How do you do it? How do you make it consistent? Well, it's just, uh, you're not proving anything. You're okay. saying words, yeah. but I'm proving within the language. Okay. I'm giving reference what the previous prophet said. Yeah. And then within what I've presented to you, the language is so clear. God, who is sitting in the throne, yeah, associate himself with his anointed. And then he become, uh, uh, let's say, is unpleased to see men trying to separate him and his anointed. And when we go to verse 10, he's actually calling all the kings of the earth to kiss the sun. So he calling that we need to honor the sun. And then he said, bless are those who put the trust in him. He's not saying to him, but he said to his son, bless are those who put the trust in him. I'm saying the message which I'm hearing is different from the message that we're hearing from one. So when in John 10, 13, when he says, uh, the Jew, what did they understand, understood when he says, son of man? And I think you missed that point. What he was referring to? He was referring to the divine figure, which was already revealed by the prophet. And where is it? In the book of Daniel. Daniel 13, he says, I was watching in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the cloud of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, who is God, yeah? And they brought him near him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. So when he was claiming to be that divine, that son of God. The son of man, you, right? Huh? It's the son of man, right? The son of man, because yeah. he took on flesh. Yeah. You see, he, he was divine, according to Micah 5, 2. Yeah. yeah? He was from everlasting, mm -hmm. but when he incarnate, when he became, yeah, I he was incarnate. Yeah. That's why he was. That's why he's referred the Son of God, the Son of Man. No, I mean in that in that, in that uh, quotation, the Son of Man, right? Yeah, yeah. in this quotation, because yeah. now yeah. he already he already was incarnate. So this is like a, a prophecy that shall be revealed. So in this context, he was like a Son of Man because he took already on humanity. So when we look even now. In this context, there's no one come to the throne of Allah. No one can be equal to Allah. But when we when we when we read the scripture, what the prophet understood and what the Jew understood when he said he was the son of man and they said blasphemy, they was referring to the scripture written already. So they said he was claiming equal to God, equality to God. But then Jesus to said, you being a human being, simple human being, you were given this title to be God. But how much whom the Father has sanctified for himself? And that's what I gave you Isaiah 40, 44. Isaiah 44, God says, him and his Redeemer are one. Is the last and the, and the first. So in this context, you understand what Jesus was saying. It's in the harmony. Yeah. The Old Testament. Okay. Old Testament. Yeah. So I'm saying this is not the language of the Quran. Okay, can I can it's I not. can I respond? So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna finish and yeah. then uh, and then I'll just say my last thing and we can call it a day. Yeah. So my point again, my yeah. contention was from the beginning I make a claim. Allah in terms of creation, he does not enter creation. So which is mean he never enter creation. As far as we know, Moses who received the law, God met God. Okay. Yeah, met God. Okay. God wrote the Ten Commandments. It was given to him. Okay. Written by God. Yeah? yeah. So within the context, the teaching of Islam, there's no way Allah can be Yahweh. Okay. The so I understand. And All then right. for when for Muhammad also has said he cannot be a true prophet because he his teaching is contrary to the previous prophet. And I have uh, clearly laid that out, and I gave references, uh -huh. and then it's up to you. You did not address yeah. any of them. Okay. You thought, you said that you worship one God, but within that one God, I show you there is a unity of the Father and the Son. Okay, well, thank you very much. I think what's not been addressed is my overarching argument, 
which is that in the Old Testament you find all these prophets like Abraham and Moses and so on talk about one God worthy of worship and then in the New Testament you find no mention of the Trinity in the Old Testament you find no mention of the Trinity I understand I know let me explain when I say the Trinity I'm talking about in its formulations of three equal it's three, it's three eternal persons. So, I, I apologize. No, no problem. Okay, but I wasn't let me just, addressing No, no, it's fine. We'll do it next time. But it's, what I'm saying is that there's a good reason for you not to address that. It's because there's no way to address it. And the second thing is this, is that I will say to you that what you've just mentioned in the book of Daniel is neither here nor there because it doesn't actually say, like you said yourself, to the son of man, Okay, number, and there's okay, it's going to be the, 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 the ascension, the, the doctrine of the ascension, or it's going to be with God. It doesn't mean anything about, it doesn't say anything about him being equal to God as you uh, purported. You're alleged that it says that this is going to be, it's going to be given the dominion, yes. John, John 10, no, no, but, uh, no, no, but as we said, we've, we've already dealt with John 10 30 and uh, 33, and we talked about, but I gave the right, no, no, but uh, we've said that you have to look at John ch uh, chapter 10, verse 33. And you also have to look at John chapter 30, verse 30, uh, 10, verse 34. And we also, you mentioned now Isaiah chapter 44, where you talked about the Redeemer and God not being separate and what being one. But you could have as easily mentioned in the New Testament where it says, I and the Father are one. Yeah, and of course, well, I mean, that's the problem. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is that if you read on, it says, I, uh, I am in, in my, in the Father is in me and I am in you. So this idea of me being in someone or someone being in someone else, I mean, the disciples... Answer that? No, 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 it's fine, but it's... It, no, I, I know, I know, but we'll, we'll go on for... It will go, it will go on for... It will go, it will go on forever. My okay, point, my point is, is that you seem to have this literalistic approach. When we're saying that I'm in someone and someone is in me, unless you want to bring the disciples, all 12 of them, into the Trinity to make it 15 uh, gods, uh, well, you know, then this idea of uh, be, being in someone doesn't actually mean that let it's some address, of us. Let me address I have yeah. to address it. Go ahead. Because the way you did it, the way you present it, it sounds like funny, but it's not. It talks about when it says, as me and my father are one, in that essence of doing one thing, it was saying, you also be one with another. What was the mission? Is to go and spread the gospel. All right, so they become one yes, in mission. doing one thing. Yeah, exactly. So that's the oneness is implying here. Yeah, yeah. It's not saying that uh, you want one and you become one. Yeah, yeah of course. That's what it's I'm saying. Common, no, but that's I agree with common you. Go, no, common goal. Goal. That, no, but that, that's what I'm saying to you. Which is unique. No, but I agree. So, with, but there's nothing. No, no. Uh, but I agree with you. Uh, what, no, what I'm saying to you is just in the same way as Jesus said to the disciples, "I am uh, the Father is in me, and I'm in you." Right, and so that doesn't mean there's 15 uh, gods. No. I'm, I'm, I'm saying also you have to the way you are uh, intelligently able to, the, you know, decipher and, and understand that that doesn't mean that this, there's some shared essence here and shared center of consciousness. It just means that they're one in goal and mission. Yes, I'm exactly saying, yeah, exactly. I'm saying. yeah, I agree with that. That God's mission. You know, uh, when we talk about Jesus, I, 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 look, I presented you his divinity based on the no, old yeah, 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 no, what I'm saying okay. to you, but here's what I'm saying to you is that well, you're looking at these verses trying to create tenuous links. I'm not, uh, yeah, yeah, but why they understood it. I know, but I, I understand. It's not me, I, don't, I understand, don't, but it's what, not my, the, my I have no qualm uh, whatsoever with Old Testament prophecies about Jesus coming and being the Redeemer. I accept those, no problem. But is it is that concept within the Islam? Yeah, yeah, we believe in the second. We believe in the second. We believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. We believe in this. We believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. We believe in the second. Do you believe it's divine? We yeah, don't believe in that. No, but do it doesn't. You? That's the point I'm making. But I'm saying in but, the book. Of, look, sorry, in the book of Isaiah chapter 44 that you mentioned, and the book of Daniel chapter 19 that you mentioned, in the book of uh, John chapter 10 verse 33 that you mentioned, in none of those places does it say Jesus is divine. What do you mean? It doesn't say Jesus it's is... It's so clear. When does, even you quote... What, okay. You, you, sorry, sorry. John sorry. 17, Marco, you quote Marco. John 17. Yeah. What does it mean? Marco, When please. he says, you the only... Ma you're yeah. the father, only Marco, it does not mention no, that saying, Jesus I'm is divine. Saying. It doesn't say Jesus is divine. No, it does. It says, okay, well, please show only, me where it says that. You the only true God and I said, me and my brother are something. We are united. We, are, no, but no, we, the, we share I, I, the I, same no, thing. I get what you're saying. But we the, share the, the same the, thing. The problem with the, con the linguistic construction was that you are the only true father, uh, God and and Jesus who you have sent. So there's... 
Uh, the, it's a oneness. Okay. Okay. You see, what I was okay. trying to represent, yeah. the same oneness is uh, in the Old Testament. All right. God claiming well, to be one. Like you, like you said. It's the same. Jesus was claiming him okay. and God as so one. So in some That's depth, all, all I'm saying, in some depth, clear. All, what's clear is that in the Old Testament, you have prophets talking about one God. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about one God. And Christianity talks about three and one and one and three. Well, Muhammad, That's the clearest thing. You did not address my point because I don't think he went deep to address my point. But I okay, appreciate fine. having this conversation. Me too. But Thank I you hope, uh, you know, the audience yeah, will want to you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Why did Thank you, brother. Sorry. No, no, we'll no, do it no, 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 it's all right. Let it just be over.